Hello everyone, I'm Sion Maxed again, Fire Product Manager for OpenShift GitOps, and today I want to walk you through the first release of OpenShift GitOps, uh, which was released as a tech preview on uh, OpenShift Container Platform. Uh, what I have in front of me is an OpenShift Container Platform uh, 4.6, and uh, I'm already logged in, looking at the administration, administrator perspective of OpenShift Web Console. Uh, let's enable OpenShift GitOps in the cluster through the Operator Hub. I go to the Operator Hub, search for GitOps from the list of the content and operators that are available there. There it is, found Red Hat OpenShift GitOps, the first version of that I was released uh, and uh, install it on the cluster. So I just go through the default and uh, wait a couple of uh, seconds that starts installing the operator and uh, the related resources and controllers for me on that cluster. What happens by default when I install the cluster is the install uh, the operator is that a, a default instance of Argo CD is also at the same time provisioned on this cluster and is pre-configured to allow uh, configuring OpenShift cluster itself through this instance of Argo CD. As soon as the operator uh, installation is ready, we get green check mark. Uh, if we look at the application launcher, we see an instance of Argo CD is added there in a shortcut so we can easily switch and navigate to this instance. Like I mentioned, this instance is pre-configured to uh, be able to manage cluster configuration with it. If you want to make customization to OpenShift the authentication or console or other areas, uh, as well as if you want to install operators, for example, it is not a cluster admin, but it has elevated privileges. So uh, it's an instance that uh, typically owned by the platform uh, ops team or the cluster owners that want to manage a cluster uh, itself. So uh, let's go to this uh, Argo CD instance and uh, make some customization to OpenShift configuration through it. We are faced with the login uh, page of Argo CD. The default user for Argo CD is admin if you haven't configured anything, any other uh, authentication for it. The password by default is generated when Argo CD gets bootstrapped and stored in a secret that is uh, living in the same namespace as Argo CD. So let's uh, get this, um, uh, let's decrypt the secret and uh, get the password out. So this is the password that was generated for Argo CD. In future versions of OpenShift, you're working on integrating authentication of Argo CD with OpenShift as well. So you would use essentially your OpenShift credentials here as well to log in into Argo CD. You wouldn't need to decrypt the secrets anymore. Let's log in. And there we have Argo CD 1.8 and right now is empty. It doesn't have any um, uh, applications or things defined in it. I do have a Git repo uh, ready, which is also the full of this demo if you want to try it on your own. And within that, there is a cluster folder that I have stored some cluster configuration. I have a cluster a console link that I can add a custom link to the application launcher, a link to the Red Hat developer blog, the Kubernetes space. And uh, I also have some namespace configurations to be created. So let's ask Argo CD to sync the content of this folder to the, to the cluster for us. I'll go through a new app in, in Argo CD. Let's call this cluster configs. I use the default project. Projects is used to group the applications inside Argo CD. And I will use the manual sync post policy in, uh, for, for this particular part because I don't want the changes from the Git repo to automatically be rolled out to the cluster. I want a chance for the ops team to review and when they're happy with the changes and sure, uh, issue a manual sync and ask Argo CD to sync the configs to the cluster. Uh, the next part is which Git repo uh, contains the configuration of the cluster. So that's the Git repo we we're looking at. I'll go with the main branch. Uh, it is better if you go with a particular commit ID or branch for your cluster. But in this example, I go with the main and uh, the content of the cluster folder is what I want to be synced to this cluster. The destination would be the cluster that I'm running on, Kubernetes default as VC. If I want to sync the content of that repo, we want to manage the configuration of a remote cluster, I can just add the cluster URL here instead. And uh, right now, everything in that repo is cluster scope resources, really. If you have other type of configuration for OpenShift, they are that are namespace scope, they usually end up in 
OpenShift configs a uh, namespace. So let's just use that namespace to be sure and recursively apply all of this. Uh, so instead of this form, if you want to be fully declarative, you could also, I have an example of um, the, the declarative way of creating the same application. You could add a, an application CR uh, from Argo CD that uh, would configure the exact same thing that I just showed you through the dashboard. Let's create this. Uh, all right, the application is created and uh, uh, Argo CD immediately does a drift detection and, notif uh, and uh, identifies that detects that uh, the cluster does not have the config that we have in the Git repo. And this is expected because we asked Argo CD to not do automate automated syncs and wait for us to issue a sync. So what we're going to do is that let's just check that in this uh, console. Uh, we, we don't have any extra links here. I will ask Argo CD to perform a sync, uh, it lists what kind of resources will be synced to the cluster, do the synchronize for me, and it automatically applies those resources to the cluster. If I go to the console under the application launcher, I see that there is actually a link added there. Uh, so the, the config is uh, in, in sync with the cluster for me. Uh, from this point on, if I want to manage the configuration of this cluster or any number of clusters, if you are in a multi-cluster environment, you have more than one cluster that is looking at this particular folder uh, uh, for, for rolling out the configurations. So uh, from this point on, what I need to do if I want to roll out a change to a number of clusters that are looking at this Git repo for to, to retrieve their configuration is really to go to the Git repo and modify the content there uh, and issue a pull request and after review, uh, get it synced. So let's modify the name of the link. I make this uh, added Kubernetes at the end. So this is the Kubernetes space of the Red Hat developer block. And normally uh, I should issue a pull request and get a chance, get, get a, the chance of review to my peers so they can uh, take a look at the change that is being asked to be rolled out to those clusters. For the demo, I'll shortcut that and issue the commit, commit directly. Um, so uh, the change that I want on those clusters now is represented by a commit, right? There is an, a history of this change, both for audit purposes and also, especially when you're looking into issues happening and you know, what happened to the cluster, you can always come look at the Git history and see what was rolled out to, to that cluster. Well, let's go take a look at uh, Argo CD dashboard and see how it looks like there. We see that Argo CD has uh, detected that there is a change uh, and uh, the state of the cluster is not the same as what we have declared in Git. Uh, which is expected. We just issued a change. I will ask Argo CD to sync this change to the cluster again. So uh, it would issue a sync and uh, roll those out to the cluster. If you look at the application launcher, we see that the name has changed to be the Kubernetes at the end. So the Git becomes my interface uh, as rolling out operations, right? The, we have changed the cluster operation to be fully uh, through the Git workflows, the pull request workflows, the the com the reviews, the comments, and uh, everything that we have been doing really around Git workflows for application. Now we can apply the same for uh, managing the configuration of the cluster itself, and that's really the value that you would get out of um, adopting GitOps for um, for configuration management. So uh, let's go further and deploy a, an application also on the cluster through um, uh, through uh, Argo CD. So in, in, in the previous section, when I asked the, the cluster configuration to be synced, we created a namespace as well uh, called Spring uh, Petkulnik so that we can deploy the Spring Petkulnik application, the Spring Boot sample application uh, in this namespace within the same um, Git repo, uh, there is an app folder that uh, I use customize for a templating system to be able to deploy manifests of Spring Boot. There is a deployment route on service that I want deployed on the cluster. So let's create a new application. We call this one Spring Pet Clinic uh, default. And this time I set an automatic. Uh, so uh, every change that is on Git, I want to automatically rolled out to the cluster. If something is removed from that Git uh, repo folder, should be removed from cluster as well. As well. And it wants self-healing. So Argo CD should enforce that uh, the state of the cluster should always be in sync with the state of the Git repo itself. Uh, I'll use the exact same Git repo here. We go still with the uh, main branch and the app uh, subfolder in that Git repo. 
uh, we are syncing to the current cluster, the, the pool uh, method. So the, this is the pool uh, model of application delivery where the cluster pulls its configuration or application into its namespaces. And this needs to get synced into the Spring Pet Clinic namespace that we were created. You can see also that Argo CD actually have detected that we are using customize uh, for that particular folder and gives me some customized configuration and options that I can, uh, can modify it if, if needed. Let's create this. And since we put it in auto sync, Argo CD automatically starts rolling out the content of that Git repo to uh, the OpenShift cluster inside a Spring Pit Clinic namespace. We see uh, Spring Pit Clinic is started deploying now and bringing it up to, uh, to a healthy status. Give it a second till the, the container is pulled from Quay. Uh, the image is pulled from Quay and deployed within the namespace. All right, it is deployed. Let's check it out. It looks like there we go. Spring Pet Clinic is deployed and it's up and running. Um, so let's let's look at the self healing part of Argo CD and, and the security aspect that we have on one side uh, a trace of every change that is rolled out to the cluster uh, in the Git provider in the Git history. So that already gives us a higher level of audit and traceability of what changes by who and when was rolled out to the cluster. But on the other hand, Argo CD constantly monitors the state of these deployed objects and compares them to the Git repo. And if there is a drift, it detects it and, and tries to correct it uh, as soon as possible. This change might be a raw uh, change, right? It might be um, somebody manually coming, changing the object on the cluster or changing the image that is deployed to an image that was not supposed to be in that cluster. There have been throughout last year breaches that were uh, really done through uh, on the cluster through just replacing the image and that that is not visible in any system. So the RCD would prevent that because uh, it immediately compares to the Git repo. So yeah, let's see, I scale this deployment to three pods and you can see that it immediately scales back to one pod. And if you look at uh, Argo CD uh, in Spring Clinic, you, um, for a moment, you might have noticed that it was in a syncing status. Uh, I can see it in the events because Argo CD also creates Kubernetes events as it uh, uh, performs operations on the cluster that it had uh, identified immediately that the cluster was out of sync, the application. Somebody had changed something on the cluster. And this is critical because the change was not issued or initiated through the Git repo. The change was initiated on the cluster and nevertheless Argo CD identified that and detected and immediately rolled it back to the state that was uh, available on the Git um, and bring it back to uh, uh, fewer, um, to, to one pod. We can do even more aggressive changes and uh, let me do, for example, uh, delete this all together. Uh, see what happens. I'm going to delete the deployment. We have some malicious user uh, logged in and is messing with the cluster. Uh, so the deployment object was uh, removed and uh, you can see that Argo CD again identified it immediately and it's rolling it out again um, to the cluster based on the content of uh, the Git repo and bring the application up so that uh, it ensures that Undesired changes cannot be rolled out to the cluster unless uh, it is coming through the Git flow and is Git flow and is approved. Um, so it, it really uh, heightens the levels of security we have and control in the changes that are rolled out to the cluster. Uh, like I mentioned, this instance of Argo CD has uh, elevated privileges to be able to manage the cluster configuration without being cluster admin. Uh, but at the same time, we have customers that want to give an instance of Argo CD to their application team so that they can control the namespaces that the applications are deployed to without being able to make any modification to the cluster uh, itself. Um, and for those instances, uh, as soon as you install the OpenShift GitOps operator within the catalog, uh, you can see that there is an Argo CD uh, instance uh, added to the developer catalog. So you could go um, instantiate an Argo CD within any namespace that you want and retrieve the password similar to what I did from the secret and your admin to that Argo CD instance that is confined to that namespace. So, so through that Argo CD instance, you cannot install an operator or make any type of cluster scope changes to, to the cluster you're running on 
uh, and you're only limited to the namespace that you're running uh, unless uh, the cluster admin comes and explicitly gives more access to this Argo CD instance. So we can cover also the cases that you want a less privileged Argo CD instance just for application uh, delivery and at the same time instances that are owned by platform operation for managing cluster configurations.